Hello, saints. Peace, love, grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. Hope everyone is doing fine out there today. We just finished up Acts chapter 10 and 11. We saw how Peter added Cornelius to the kingdom program in Acts chapter 10. Then in Acts chapter 11, Peter explains to the other Jewish brethren why he added a Gentile to the little flock. Then we saw Barnabas head north. First, he goes to Antioch to say hello, to check in with the little flock that's there. Then Barnabas keeps heading north to find Paul in Roman Gentile Tarsus, where Paul has been preaching the gospel of grace, the revelation of the mystery, for over 10 years now. Both Paul and Barnabas head down to Antioch for about a year. Then they're sent down to Judea to bring supplies to the believers who are suffering because of this famine that's taking place throughout that whole region. Now, the scene opens up with chapter 12 while Paul and Barnabas are in Jerusalem. Now, keep in mind, God is about to send Paul all throughout the West to proclaim this new program of grace to all the Jews who fled Judea during the persecution of Stephen. So we have tens of thousands of kingdom saints all throughout Greece, Asia, and Galatia, and Rome, and so on. They all need to be shown and taught this new revelation that Jesus revealed to Paul in Damascus and in Arabia. In every city that Paul visits from now on, he heads there with the intention to first speak to the kingdom saints, the Jews. And during that time, while he's there, he's also going to speak before the Gentiles. This new gospel of grace, a body of believers made up of both Jews and Gentiles. We're seeing this shift between the kingdom over to grace, little by little, from the prophecy program to the mystery program, one city at a time, until Paul ends up in Rome eventually, and the gospel is complete. The gospel of grace is made dominant and will last for over 2,000 years. Now in Acts chapter 12, as we get started in verse 1, now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Now church here, of course, being the word ecclesia, meaning an assembly of believers. It's not necessarily the church as we know it today in the body of Christ. The word church simply means an assembly of believers. And also, we see the words, the phrase that time, about that time. It's somewhere between 46 and 47 AD. In verse 2, and he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. We're introduced to a new word here. Quaternion. A quaternion is a group of four soldiers. So we see four groups of four soldiers, 16 soldiers. And the reason why they had to do it that way is to cover all shifts, basically, is to have four soldiers standing watch during every watch period, a day divided by four watches of six hours each. So you'd need 16 soldiers of four quaternions to fulfill that duty. And also, the elephant in the room here is this word, Easter. Is this a mistake in the King James Version Bible? Why is it there? Why is a pagan word in the King James Version Bible? A pagan celebration in the King James Version Bible? Well, first of all, it's not a mistake. There are no mistakes in the King James Version Bible. Second, the word Easter is in fact pagan and it happens to be the pagan celebration of King Herod. Now one thing to take note of here is that verse 4 is a quote of Herod's words. It's something that he said he would do to Peter. 
intending to release him after Easter. And the reason why Herod chose the word Easter is because Herod was into paganism, worshiping everything but the one true living God. It's said that Herod changed the Jewish celebration of Passover by renaming it, renaming the Resurrection Sunday that we know of to the name Easter after his pagan deity, Ishter, who became throughout time the word Easter. So it's not a mistake at all. And the King James Version Bible correctly records exactly what's taking place at that time, including the fact that Herod was a pagan and worshipped fallen angels, fallen gods, the gods with the little g's of no significance. Okay, moving on to verse 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out, and followed him. And wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out, and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of surety that the Lord hath sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before that gate. Now Rhoda is so excited, so overwhelmed, that she doesn't even open the door. She runs back to the others to tell them what just happened. Verse 15, And they said unto her, Thou art mad. They thought she was crazy. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, telling him to be quiet, declaring unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison, and he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now, as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers at what was become of Peter. And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea, and there he abode. Now looking at the map in front of us, take note of where Caesarea is. He leaves Judea and he heads for Caesarea then in verse 20 and Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon but they came with one accord to him and having made Blastus the king's chamberlain their friend desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country and upon a set day Herod arrayed in royal apparel sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. An oration is simply a speech to the people. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God, and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms, 
and gave up the ghost. He died. But the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Okay, so by this time, Paul and Barnabas had enough time to travel back from Judea all the way back to Antioch. And they brought John Mark with them. So now we're at chapter 13. And chapter 13 is a very special chapter because it's here that God really begins to rev things up. The whole idea is to bring the gospel of the kingdom to a complete stop and enable the gospel of grace to take over. This transition we're seeing throughout our study. The year is right around 48 AD when Paul begins his journeys. In the next chapter, we'll begin to see Paul and his first journeys throughout the region He's going to find all the scattered Jews to tell them this new revelation of the mystery, a new gospel, a body of believers made up of both Jews and Gentiles. So in each city that Paul stops at, he goes straight to the synagogues to inform the kingdom saints and also the unbelieving Jews of this new program, death, burial, resurrection, salvation by faith alone. And the law-minded Jews who both believe and also reject Jesus as Messiah, they'll still all have a hard time understanding Paul's gospel because it's without works. It's without the law. For them, it's hard to believe. And that's what Paul has to contend with for the next 15 or so years while he preaches throughout all these cities. Peter talks about this problem for the Jews, the problem they had understanding the gospel of grace, this mystery revealed to Paul by Jesus Christ. Peter writes about this in 2 Peter verse 3, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you. I'm sorry, it was 2 Peter chapter 3. Now Peter acknowledges, is acknowledging this ability that was given to the Apostle Paul. This mystery that Jesus told Paul in 16, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do other, also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. See, they were trying to make Paul's gospel conform to their religion. And this wasn't working out so well. Because Paul's gospel of grace had nothing to do with works and following the laws. The Jews had a really hard time with that. And we read why in Romans. Paul writes again concerning the Jews in Romans 11:25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So while Paul's contending with the mindset of these Jews, with their religious works, the conditioning of the Mosaic system, the Gentiles are present in these synagogues as well. And they're listening to all of this. They're listening to everything that comes out of Paul's mouth. They're listening to Paul uh, explain the fall of Israel in this new gospel revealed by Jesus Christ, the gospel of grace. And while they're listening to Paul, they come to believe this mystery gospel of grace, faith without the laws and works. In the body of Christ, the dispensation of grace begins to flourish all throughout those countries all the cities and all the territories both Jews and Gentiles in one body a new dispensation through Israel's fall and for the next 2,000 years so until next time peace love grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you Lord willing I'll see you on the next study